Number 8. Grisel Gonzaga On December 7th of 2019, Grisel Gonzaga ordered a rideshare vehicle to get from California to Nevada and visit her ex-girlfriend, Alexa Incandela. Gonzaga had told her a day before that she was planning a surprise, but Incandela told her she wasn't welcome. When the former arrived, she found that the door was locked. Determined to enter, Gonzaga broke into the house through a sliding door in the back and went upstairs to Incandela's bedroom. She and her new love interest, Travis Smith, were lying in bed when Gonzaga entered the room. Enraged at the sight of her ex-girlfriend and her new boyfriend, Gonzaga began attacking her. Smith tried to intervene, but Gonzaga grabbed a pair of tweezers, stabbing him and Incandela with them. The attack continued until Smith was able to drag her outside, but Gonzaga then managed to break into the house a second time and continued her onslaught. She choked Smith unconscious and stomped on his forehead, hard enough to leave a footprint and cause head trauma. The woman eventually left the house after destroying numerous belongings of her ex-girlfriends. Incandela called 911 and responding officers found Smith suffering from head injuries and puncture wounds. Incandela had also suffered lacerations in the attack. Shortly after, Gonzaga was found in close proximity to her ex-girlfriend's house and was arrested. While Incandela was treated at the scene, Smith subsequently died at the hospital. In March of 2021, Grisel Gonzaga was found guilty on charges of voluntary manslaughter and battery, with the use of a deadly weapon leading to substantial bodily hurt and sentenced to three to ten years in prison. Number 7. Marissa DeVault In January of 2009, Marissa DeVault took out a $500,000 life insurance policy on her husband, Dale Harrell. She was determined to pay her debt to ex-lover Alan Flores, a man she'd met in 2007 through an online sugar daddy website. DeVault and Flores engaged in an extramarital relationship at first, but by the time their affair ended, she had accumulated a $362,000 debt to him. The man made her sign a promissory note in 2007, saying that she would return the money by December the 31st of 2009. With the due date approaching, DeVault allegedly kept telling Flores a false story about coming into a large inheritance. The man became suspicious and reportedly began documenting her claims, fearing she would harm him to get rid of the debt. He also documented his ex-girlfriend sending him the insurance and telling him she planned to have her husband killed. On January the 14th of 2009, as DeVault's husband was sleeping in the bedroom of their home in Maricopa County, Arizona, she entered the room holding a claw hammer. She walked up to the bed and began striking Harrell in the head with it, causing critical injuries to his skull. He was taken to the hospital and the woman initially told the police he'd been attacked by an unknown intruder. However, she later changed her story and confessed to beating Harrell, claiming her husband had been abusing her and that she'd acted in self-defense. She was arrested on the same night of the attack on charges of aggravated assault, but was later released on bail. On February the 9th of 2009, Harrell died and DeVault was charged with first-degree murder. Police then searched Flores' home and found illegal adult films on his computer, along with relevant evidence to prosecute DeVault. The ex-boyfriend was given limited immunity in exchange for his testimony, which would aid in her conviction. On April the 30th of 2014, the woman was found guilty of killing her husband to collect his life insurance policy and sentenced to life in prison. Number 6. Melanie Eam in the early hours of November the 17th of 2016, James Barry, a man in his early 20s, was found fatally wounded on his bed at his parents' home in Loxahatchee, Florida. His mother's boyfriend, Guy Hand, was awoken to the sound of Barry screaming and rushed in to see what was happening, only to find him lying in a pool of his own blood. He had been stabbed repeatedly and the attacker had already fled the scene. Hand attempted CPR and called for help, but in spite of his efforts, Barry died before paramedics arrived. Within the course of three days, the police arrested the victim's 20-year-old ex-girlfriend, Melanie Eam. Investigators learned that Barry had recently broken up with Eam through a text message after a relationship that had lasted for roughly two years. Shortly after being taken into custody, Eam confessed to a detective she'd stabbed Barry with a butter knife in a fit of rage, angered by his decision to end the relationship via text. When asked how many times she'd struck her ex-boyfriend with the knife, she replied by saying, I don't know, it's not like I counted. Even though the confession was recorded, Ian pleaded not guilty to second-degree murder during the trial. Moreover, her defense lawyers casted suspicion on Guy Hand, the boyfriend of Barry's mother, because he'd moved the murder weapon. They managed to create 
reasonable doubt in the minds of jurors, claiming Ian had gotten into an argument with Hand and that Barry stepped in between them, accidentally getting stabbed by Hand in the process. However, Ian was retried in January 2019 and found guilty of her ex-boyfriend's murder. She was sentenced to 50 years in prison. Number 5. Cristina Davia Rodriguez On March the 5th of 2021, Cristina Davia Rodriguez, age 24, went to visit her ex-boyfriend, 29-year-old businessman Paulo Roberto Mores Teixeira Jr. at his home in Manaus, Brazil. Although they were not in a relationship anymore, Rodriguez was still employed at Morales' internet installation company, where they'd initially met. She'd been asking her former partner to pay for her breast augmentation surgery, but he had told her the company had to cut costs due to economic strife brought about by the pandemic. They were having an argument about the subject at Morales' house when things became heated and Rodriguez shot her ex-boyfriend in the back of the head with a .380 caliber handgun. She then walked out, called her mother, and confessed the crime. Rodriguez's mother then spoke with Morales' brother to let him know about the incident, and they left together for his house. They arrived to find Morales in critical condition in the kitchen. He was rushed to the hospital where he passed away after two days. On March the 8th of 2021, a warrant was issued for Rodriguez's arrest, and she surrendered to the authorities. She admitted to shooting her former partner but claimed she had no intention of killing him. She told investigators Morales had two firearms, one in the house and the other in his car. Rodriguez reported she'd taken the one in the house in case she needed to defend herself and shot him by accident. However, the victim's siblings think the woman had planned everything. Her trial is ongoing. Number 4. Alverna Shea Xiu Pin On May the 16th of 2020, 32-year-old Wei Jun Shang was at a multi-story car park in Bedok, Singapore, where he abruptly suffered a heart attack leading to his death. Later in the day, Singapore police were alerted to a case of unnatural death and after doing follow-up investigations for over six months, they arrested 38-year-old Alverna Shea Xiu Pin Xiang's ex-girlfriend in relation to the incident. They suspected a woman who was the director of City Funeral Singapore and a single mother of two girls had committed an unspecified act that resulted in her ex-boyfriend's death. She was arrested and held on remand for further investigations. On December the 3rd of 2020, Xiu Pin was charged with one count of culpable homicide, not constituting murder. According to the charge sheet, the woman had caused the death of Xiang, but court documents didn't disclose any further details about how she could have provoked his death. The information was withheld by the authorities so that others wouldn't copy her modus operandi. It became a subject of debate and speculation online, with one theory entertaining the possibility of formaldehyde poisoning, given her access to it as a funeral director. If proven guilty, Alverna Xia Xu Pin faces either life sentence or a fine and a 20-year-long prison sentence. Number 3. Anaya Thomas and the Niqua Bird on September the 1st of 2020, Natika Lanier, aged 27, and her girlfriend traveled to Lanier's ex-girlfriend's home in Cocoa, Florida, to confront her about a social media post. As she was exiting her vehicle and entering the apartment complex where 21-year-old Anaya Thomas lived, Lanier went live on social media to stream the ensuing confrontation. She found her ex-girlfriend with her new partner, 19-year-old Laniqua Bird, and the encounter quickly became heated. Thomas told Bird to shoot Lanier and soon enough gunfire erupted. Natika Lanier was reportedly shot nine times as she was streaming live on social media. Multiple people in the area who'd heard the gunshots called 911 and police arrived at the scene where they found Lanier unresponsive. They attempted to render aid until paramedics arrived and she was later pronounced dead at the hospital. Thomas and Bird were arrested that day after officers held multiple witness interviews and reviewed the video evidence. The two are facing charges of second-degree murder. Today's topic was requested by Ail Lagarda, Ziz Fuak, Nick TTG, and Kuro Yukihimi. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Shayna Hubers On October the 12th of 2012, at around 9 p.m., 21-year-old Shayna Hubers called 911 to tell the dispatcher that she'd shot her former boyfriend, Ryan Poston, aged 29, and that he'd stopped breathing. They had dated for about a year and had an on-again, off-again relationship. According to Poston's family, at the time Hubers had shot him, he was trying to break up with her. He'd allegedly scheduled a date with former Miss Ohio, Audrey Bolt, 
which enraged his ex-girlfriend. Hubers was at Poston's home in Fort Thomas, Kentucky when she made the 911 call. Officers arriving at the scene discovered that he had six gunshot wounds in his forehead, back, and torso. Although she was read her rights instead of remaining silent, Hubers immediately told officers she had acted in self-defense after her boyfriend had allegedly pushed her against furniture in the house. The woman was taken into custody and left alone in the interrogation room where CCTV recorded her acting bizarre, pacing around, dancing, snapping her fingers, singing Amazing Grace, and chanting, I killed him, I killed him. A cellmate of Hubers's later revealed that she'd cackled upon commenting on the shooting of her ex-boyfriend, claiming to have given him the nose job he always wanted. In April of 2015, Shayna Hubers was found guilty of first-degree murder, and in August she was sentenced to 40 years in prison. As one of the jurors who'd convicted her was revealed to be a felon, she was granted a new trial. Hubers was also found guilty during her retrial, and she was sentenced to life in prison in October 2018, with prosecutors saying she'd shown no remorse for her crime. Number 1. Rachel Hilliard Following the breakup with her former partner, 38-year-old Rachel Hilliard insisted that the man's mother, 63-year-old Mickey Davis, come by her house in Wichita, Kansas, to get her son's belongings. On April the 8th of 2017, Davis took her 9-year-old grandson along and headed towards Hilliard's house when she arrived. Hilliard began assaulting her right in front of the child, who was terrified and immediately fled the scene. However, despite being in shock, the boy managed to grab a phone from his grandmother's car and call 911. Responding police officers found the miner nearly half a mile away from Hilliard's house and asked for his help in leading them back to the scene. After ringing the door and receiving no answer, the authorities checked the garage and discovered Davis's decapitated body. Looking further, they noticed the victim's head abandoned in the kitchen sink. After raiding the premises, officers also found Hilliard hiding inside the house and took her into custody without incident. More evidence emerged in the aftermath, which revealed that the woman had been making bizarre social media posts in the days prior to the attack, writing poems about serial murder and beheadings. During interrogations, Hilliard told investigators that before the brutal attack on Davis, she had called a pastor to perform an exorcism in order to clean her home of evil spirits. A cleric later confirmed the encounter. Hilliard also revealed in an interview that she'd been in a car accident in 2003, which left her with a brain injury but insisted that it had nothing to do with the killing. Despite her claims of being possessed and not in control of her actions, prosecutors said the woman had premeditated the murder and the subsequent dismemberment. After the miner had left, she grabbed a kitchen knife to behead her ex-boyfriend's mother. At some point, the blade broke, so Hilliard grabbed a second knife to finish what she'd started. In November 2020, she was convicted of first-degree murder and sentenced to life in prison. Thanks for watching. Would you rather walk the earth from pole to pole or be tried by a jury of your exes for a crime you didn't commit? Let us know in the comments section below.